we hold out the boat in Shelter Bay Marina in Panama to get new rudders built and to do some more improvements on the boat. After about three weeks on the hard, we headed towards Bocas del Toro with some new crew on board. We made a very interesting stop in the small village Tobobo where we got to know some locals. After Bocas del Toro, we headed south again to show the small and pretty islands of San Blas. Time flies! It was now time to transit the Panama Canal. We got very lucky when we were scheduled the transit two days after the payment. Sometimes you need to wait weeks. When transiting the canal, you need to be one captain and four line handlers. Luckily, we found two guys to help us. We did the three first locks in the evening and stayed overnight in Gatun Lake. We then continued the next morning and after another three locks, we said hello to Panama City. A city we got to know very well five years earlier. It felt a little bit like coming home again. After six months on board, it was time for my brother to get back to Sweden. New crew to join us over the Pacific. Say hi to Angie and Esra. After some days of full-time shopping and a $1500 provisioning, we left Panama City and headed to Las Perlas. There was some play in the rudder bushing and I wanted to drop the rudder to check it carefully. We waded out the tide and dug a big hole in the sand to drop it in. Can't say we found anything, but at least we've now checked it. with Galapagos as next destination, but after about one and a half day of sailing we decided to head back again. The winds were not in our favor and it was better to wait out a better weather forecast. And after another four days we gave it a second shot. Several weeks on open ocean, cooking and baking was one thing that kept us all occupied for quite some time, and it was always the highlight of the day. Angie never really got rid of her nausea, but kept on fighting it and always tried to stay positive. We used propane for cooking and averaging about 2 pounds or 1 kilo per week. Usually we carry two 25 pounder or 12 kilo bottles, and it's never been a problem refilling it, no matter where we've been. It took us 9 days to get to Galapagos, a little bit slower and not as good winds as the same trip we did 5 years earlier. We had heard about stricter and more expensive check-in, but nobody came out to our boat. We tried to check in, but was asked to get an agent and tried to contact him without success. Me and Karen were battling some boat problems for a week and did not get to see a lot of the island. After a week we decided to leave, Andy and Esra had managed to explore what they wanted to see. And we were all happy, not needed to pay the thousand US dollar we were expecting to do. Searching for things unspoken, we 
from Galapagos to French Polynesia is about 3,200 nautical miles, equaling about 3,700 miles or 6,000 kilometers. We maintained a speed between 5 and 7 knots on a broad reach, with winds around 10 to 20 knots. The depth in these waters are usually between 10 to 15,000 feet or 3 to 4,500 meters. The big difference comparing longer passages this time to the passage 5 years earlier is the night watches. With 4 people on board now, we had one 3 hour shift each, so when you had finished your shift, nobody needed to wake you up for the next one. After 22 days at sea, we could finally approach the beautiful anchorage in Fatuhiva. Taking us 22 days to get here gives an average speed around 6 knots. This boat is a Mini Transat 650, 21 feet long. They left one hour before us from Galapagos, but were flying spinnaker all the time and made it in incredible 18 days. We got invited home to Temo and his family for our Father's Day party with a bunch of other cruisers. The hospitality is very good here and loads of delicious food was served. After a week here we headed north to Hiva'ua. This is a much larger island with an airport as well. This is also an official checking port. Overall, I wouldn't say Marquesas has great snorkeling, except a couple of places, which instead are incredibly good. One of them is the island Tawata. The manta rays comes here every morning to feed on the plankton. Four days sailing south took us to the archipelago Tuamutus. We entered the lagoon of the atoll Raroya, famous because it was here the Contiki rafts stranded in 1947. And again, we were invited home to locals. This is at Tatiana and Richie's house. And this is at another party hosted by a family who ran a pearl farm. We continued to Fakaraba. Here we'd heard about amazing shark diving and snorkeling outside the passage of the atoll. 100 feet down we could see hundreds of sharks. Some came out to say hello. And of course, we did the mandatory living on an island activity, making a bonfire. After 
after many hours snorkeling we were all satisfied. Ahead of us was a two-day sailing trip to Tahiti. What we had experienced so far was more windy conditions than five years ago. More winds around 20-25 knots, while back then was very seldom above 15-16 knots. Next episode, we get to Tahiti and have a big laugh when we're swimming with stingrays. <laughs> Subscribe to not miss out on any new episodes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>